folks, good morning and welcome to Neon. It's actually, I, I don't know if uh, Gaynor is going to share the link, but um, unfortunately we had, uh, we couldn't have service at the property this morning because of our lack of facilities at this stage to keep you dry when you come. And um, one, and secondly, we had incredible rain, which we are very grateful for. Uh, in the two days we almost had, uh, I think it was was 57, almost 16 millimeters of rain that came down. And um, a lot of things was going through my mind uh, this week. And one thing that I'm, that I'm excited about is that Abba Father is really, really faithful. Holy Spirit is... Um, is always on time and always ready to reveal uh, things to us in time so that nothing will ever catch you of God. A verse of scripture that, that I want to share with you this morning is in Matthew 5, and, and I believe it's verse 14, where, where Jesus was teaching his disciples on, on uh, forgiveness and, and praying uh, our Heavenly Father, which are in heaven. I think one of the, one of the most well-known prayers in the Bible. But before we do, do spend some time in Scripture, let us, I've got, a, I've got a nice cup of coffee that I usually cannot do when we've got church on Sundays, but I want you to just get yourself a cup of coffee. Um, but not now. Let's just um, pray. Father, thank you that we know that you're a loving Father. You're, an, you're absolutely an incredible God. And thank you that you are the only God that can give us, that can give peace. All the other gods are not able to give peace. And thank you that the peace that surpasses all understanding will flood our hearts and our minds if we are in Christ Jesus. Thank you that you reminded me this week that you've never seen the righteous forsaken or the offspring begging for bread. Thank you that you've also reminded me that greater is he that is for the church than he that is against the church. And this morning, I just want to bless somebody listening to me, and, and I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just take control of my lips. Whatever flows out of my mouth, that it will just have an effect on someone's life. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I was thinking of um, Israel when they found themselves between... The, the Egyptian army and the sea and the feeling that they had in their hearts in that moment when they saw the enemy coming with chariots and a mighty army and on the other side of them is, is, an, impos is an impossibility. There's no ways that we can get through this and we're going to die. A lot of times we find ourselves in a place where we believe that um, sometimes people even believe that God has tricked them into that position. Is it, Lord, is this what you was this what you've done to me? Is this what, was this your purpose from the start that you would bring me to this place and and so that I can die here? Is this is this my end? And I want to bless you this morning with this word that's in my spirit. And let me tell you something. Um, if it was up to flesh. I would not be preaching to you this morning, um, but I'm grateful that I'm, 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 I'm most of the time I allow myself to be led by the Spirit and not by my emotions. So I wanted to share this word with you, and I trust that Abba Father will just bless this to your heart. You might say, what has this got to do with Matthew 6, 14, where Jesus was saying, for if you forgive uh, someone their trespasses, your Father in heaven will forgive your trespasses. And you'll say, what has this got to do? with Israel being between uh, the Egyptian army and the sea. Now, um, a lot of times in our lives, I, wouldn't it be awesome if everything that we plan, everything that we dream, it just falls into place? It would be incredible if, if you write a vision down and just behind you, this vision just automatically um, unfolds and and the, and is turned into reality. But the truth of the fact is, everywhere where there's a vision, there's always division um, coming. Uh, I was I was thinking. I think it was last week. I don't know if I mentioned it last week or even even in this week. Uh, somewhere along the line, I've mentioned 
the the fact that uh, Moses missed out on the promised land because he listened to naysayers. He listened to guys that said it's impossible for us to take this land. Now, when you when you send out ten spies to go and check out a promise that God promised you this place, and you send um, ten that have got no uh, vision, and you send two that have got vision, then the two will come back and say, "We can do this. We can take this land. This is a this is a promise." But ten will say no. And and I found in I've, I'm in ministry for for quite some time now. So I think it's my 28th year full time in ministry without any um, sabbatical or any break, apart from uh, uh, going on holiday over the festive season. But I've seen in in churches growing up uh, as a young man. I have seen and, and looked at church councils and, and listened to stories that were told about church councils that it is usually the minority that's right and the majority that's wrong. But the minority can also be wrong and the majority can be correct. But um, one of the things that I believe, and maybe if you're a minister and you're listening to me, I want you to, to take... Uh, take note of this that if God called you to lead lead don't allow yourself to to be led because the moment Moses allowed himself to lead that was when he missed the promise so up until the stage where Moses took authority and he said this is what God said and this is what God wanted me to do um, Israel was fine but the moment he allowed the, the, the people to choose he, um, he he missed his promise so um, why why do I want to link forgiveness with um, my message this morning? Imagine how, how irritated Moses was when he went through everything that he's gone through. From the God talking to him in a burning bush, facing Pharaoh, um, all the stuff he did and then the sorcerers did exactly the same. All the plagues, all the rejection, all the no, they, I'm not letting these people go. And then eventually, the death of the firstborns, and, and there they exit the uh, place of slavery. And for the first time, they are healed, they are free, and they're rich. And there goes, um, some say three million, some say three and a half million Jews. There they go into the wilderness on their way, an 11-day journey to a promise, and suddenly they find themselves in front of a sea with the enemy coming from the from behind, ready to sort them out. I'm sorry, I don't know who, who messed this frame up. Let me just <laughs> get it a bit square there. And, and the pressure that was on Moses as, as a leader to... Now, he made some mistakes as well, but um, he was between God and the people. And... And I'm not saying that as a minister, I'm standing between God and people. Everybody is, is on, on equal footing with God because of Holy Spirit's influence in our lives. Um, everybody's not gifted uh, equally. Um, some, some have got different giftings in their lives. Some people can paint, some can't. Some can sing, some can't. Um, some can organize, some can't. Some can make money, some can lose money. So we're gifted differently. But when Moses listened to God and God suddenly opened this highway, it, within the impossibility. Um, and they walked through and God covered the enemy behind them. Uh, I think there was great celebration in the camp. And I think Moses was very glad that he knew God. Then on the other side, they were supposed to just take this land. And instead of Moses doing exactly what he did, listening to God and saying, this is what we're going to do. He sent out people to go and decide on God's behalf whether it can be done or whether it can't be done. Now, I listened to old Arnold Schwarzenegger in the week on five tips on success, and somebody said to me something in last, he said, Donnie, if you do exactly the same thing, you'll get exactly the same result. Um, but um, I was listening to uh, Arnold, and obviously he faced a lot of things in his life where people told him, you will never be successful. One, you will never be an actioneer. Two, your accent sucks. You, you, you can't uh, 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 use that accent and be successful. And they had a lot of excuses why, why he couldn't make it. And 
he's got the four other keys that he gave um, in that clip. You can go down on my timeline. You can listen to this. It's really a blessing to listen to Arnold Alberbach um, uh, preaching to me in the week. And Moses had naysayers. Moses had naysayers. Moses had ten naysayers that, saying, that said to him, we can't take this land. We look like grasshoppers in their eyes and in our own eyes. Now, I don't know if there was mirrors in the day. Sorry for the notification. I don't know if there was mirrors in the day, but they obviously felt um, unequipped to take the promised land. And God said, I'll give it to you. Now, the result of, the, of listening to those people cost them 40 years in the wilderness. And you know what is a sad thing? It even cost Joshua and Caleb 40 years in the wilderness. The two guys that said we could do it, they also had to lose out on 40 years of promise because of 10 people that decided the fate of 3.5 million people. And they moved around the same mountain every year. And every year they came back to exactly the same spot and they had exactly the same challenge. Can we or can't we? Until that generation of unbelievers died out and God made it possible. But I think Moses was miffed, if I can use the terminology. And sorry, it's not, it's not pulpit language, but I think Moses was seriously irritated. He's gone through all the hassles. He said, Lord, I ate manna and coils for 40 years of my life. And now I can't go into the promised land and eat milk and honey. And, I, and by the way, I'm the pastor. I'm the leader of the group or the apostle or whatever your title is. And how often do people miss out on destiny and greatness in seasons because they listen to someone else saying it can't be done. At times there's people saying things can't be done and they are sent by God with a specific purpose to, to stop you from making mistakes. But that need, you need to discern that on, on your own. Now, let me, I, think Moses had an, uh, I think Moses had this, Moses must have had this feeling of unforgiveness in his heart towards himself for first of all listening to these guys and secondly to these guys that had so little faith that they could actually take this land. So Moses most probably sat with bitterness in his heart for spending 40 years in a wilderness where he could have spent the prime of his life in a land of milk and honey. Um, we were just standing around the, the, the table this morning, me and Tashai, and, and we were talking and I said to her, one of the secrets, my one of the secret things I believe in life is that um, if somebody offends you you um you should not make that personal always remember who stands behind the curtains now when i preached on this many years back on the if you forgive you will be forgiven if you don't forgive your father in heaven will not forgive you in matthew 6 i remember preaching this because it was in the new testament yet it was still solidly old covenant it was before the cross I remember teaching on this as a condition of forgiveness. It, God cannot forgive you unless you are willing to forgive someone else. Now, that is not the truth. In the law, in the law system, it was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. So you forgive, I forgive. You don't forgive, I don't forgive. And we know that Hebrews makes it clear that there's no forgiveness of sins unless there's shedding of blood so it's obviously not just a, a simple act of me saying okay i forgive a b and c so now god will forgive me my a b and c's um because hebrews makes it clear that without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins and when i just may pray a simple prayer which is not simple it's a difficult prayer to pray father forgive a b and c uh, that have sinned against me um when I pray that prayer, there's no shedding of blood, so there's no forgiveness of sins. But in the law, in the context where Jesus was teaching this, he, he, he knew the consequence of the law. If you do, I do. If you don't, I do. I can't. It's not that God don't want to. It's that the law has specific rules and regulations. Now, you might interpret this differently. You might say, Donnie, you're completely off your rocker. You just take a cup of coffee. Shall I give him my coffee? But I just 
I want you to think about a couple of things quickly before um, I close this, uh, this just life uh, fellowship. One, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Think about this. So carnal meaning flesh. So if there's a battle in your life, if there is an Egypt behind you and a uh, impossibility in front of you, um, ask yourself the following question. Uh, do you believe God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ever think or imagine? God is able. I want you to... to, to Think about a couple of things while, while I'm while I'm sharing what I'm sharing with you this morning. The weapons of your warfare is not Egypt behind you. You see, the Pharaoh of the day and his armies was considered the enemy, but the actual enemy was a spiritual enemy that worked in the heart of Pharaoh to wipe the the Jewish people and God's promise of the earth. And um so if there's a promise in your life or something, that, that a dream that God has given you, and somebody stands up against that dream, don't ever take it personal. Don't ever look at that. Don't ever frame that person's face in a room in your heart called bitterness. Don't ever do that. Because when you do that, you miss out on beautiful things in your, in your own life. Why? Because the weapons of our warfare, one, are not gone. And secondly, um, it's not against flesh and blood. So it was flesh and blood that told Moses, it's impossible for us to take this land. It's flesh and blood that said, we will die in the wilderness. It's flesh and blood that said, the Egyptians are going to kill us. But the same way there is a spirit behind the attack, there is a spirit inside of you that raised Jesus from the dead. And if that spirit that lives in you, he will quicken your mortal body. He will take you out of this dispensation of, mort of mortality into the dispensation of immortality uh, in, the, in the resurrection. I, God spoke to me this morning and and I used to think that if I don't forgive the person that sinned against me, then God's holding this grudge against me. And one day when I die, I'll stand before God. God will say, sorry, man, you know how desperately I wanted to forgive you. But because you didn't forgive A, B, and C, the following I, I had to hold against your name, I'm very sorry, you're not going to come into heaven. Um, you've disqualified yourself. Now, God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us so that we could become the rights of God in Christ Jesus. God reconciled us unto himself by not imputing our sins and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So that is our ministry. The ministry is to reconcile yourself with those that are against you. Now, let me tell you how you do that. One, um, most of the time when, when, somebody's, when somebody's coming against you, it would not have benefited Moses to go to the Egyptian army and try to, to sort out a plea bargain with the Egyptian army. He would have had himself killed. So um, let me just give you this spiritual advice. Confronting somebody that, that stands up against you is not going to solve problems. First thing it's going to do, it's going to mess it up even more. Somebody's going to get killed in, the, in, the, in this fight. You need to listen to what God is saying through me now. What Moses did, Moses went to God, and that's what you need to do. If there's an army behind you and is trying to take your promise away from you, your answer is in the presence of God. Now, now presence of God is religiously made um, a secret place up in the heavens, and you need to shout in order to get God's attention now. God's spirit lives right inside of you, so you can find a place where you sit down, and you get and you get and you get yourself to be quiet before the Lord, and you listen and clearly to what God is saying to where you need to go from here. If God tells you go and confront the Pharaoh, then you do that. But if God doesn't say that, then you don't. God always knows best. You know why? Because God is not emotionally involved in your emotions. 
God is not influenced by our will, our lusts, and our desires, and the things that we want, and the things that we want um, selfishly, and we do not um, want to see someone else um, uh, gain a b and c above me. That's all my selfishness. So when you take time and you go and sit in the presence of Abba Father and you listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, and sometimes it'll take you some time to listen to his voice because um, you know that God didn't immediately give Moses the advice. God first placed fire between the armies and, and the people to keep them away, to keep them away from actually reaching the Jewish people. And sometimes in your life, if you need to, you need to ask the fire of the Holy Spirit to come in between you and the thing that comes against you and say, Father, just, just burn away the chaff. In the end, people, there's two things that will happen in the decision that you make. One, relationships will be built or relationships will be destroyed. For, for, for you to build relationships, you need to listen to what God is saying to you and not to what man is saying to you and you need to write that vision down you need to make sure that god that's what god said imagine the people when moses came back and said you see this rod i am going to hit this ocean with this rod imagine the what what are you smoking moses man um how in the heck in the world do you think hitting the water with a rod is going to make a way for us? And then God, God, God can use a small, minute, insignificant way to solve a problem if you don't become part of the problem. Don't become, don't fight your Pharaoh. Don't fight the armies. Don't throw sand in their eyes. Peanut butter is not going to help you in this um, scenario for those of you that are south africans and what's the peanut butter ad um so going to help you in this scenario man you need to listen to what god is saying to you in that moment and that's what you need to do and sometimes you it'll take you a, a while to to clearly hear god's voice and you know what the voice of the lord will do the voice of god will immediately take your face off um your focus off the face of pharaoh it'll immediately place your focus back on the promise that is what I promised you. Your way towards your promise is through this through the sea. It's not fighting your a battle against uh, Pharaoh. And God made a way for them where there was no way. And God has done that in the past, and God will do it for you again. I'm prophesying over your life. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ever dream or imagine if you listen to his voice and not allow yourself to be led by your emotions you know that your emotions can be a spy in your life your emotions can completely come against god's plan for your life and yet god is god can see where no man can see and god will not bring you to a place and abandon you there. You need to listen to me this morning. He will not do that. God is supernatural. And he's able. He's never lost his ability. And you know what's the beautiful thing about God? We, God made a way in an old covenant where Holy Spirit wasn't an indwelling spirit. He made a way for Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He made a way for Daniel in the lion's den. He made a way for Gideon. He made a way for, for Samson and for David and for Samuel. And God, God made a way in a dispensation where Holy Spirit wasn't an indwelling spirit. And now the enemy comes and tells you, now that that spirit lives inside of you, there will be no way. I don't care how big the army is that is behind you. I don't care how big the nose is that is behind you. And the, it is impossible to do that. And if God's not going to come through for you, I don't care how big it is. If God tells you, he's going to take you there and you stick with what he told you, you will get there. But please don't waste 40 years of your life in a wilderness scenario because you lend your ears out to people without vision. You lend your ears out to people that see giants instead of a giant God. Don't step into that, into that uh, trap. It'll mess, it'll mess, it'll, it'll, sorry, waste years of your life. So one, don't fight Pharaoh. Two, 
There is a spirit behind Pharaoh that's trying to destroy what God wants to do in your life and what God has promised you. So yes, the enemy will use a Pharaoh. Yes, he will use somebody that, you know what Moses and Pharaoh was brothers? They, they were raised in the same house. He was, Moses was raised in royalty. He and Pharaoh was most probably best buddies. This, and later on, the same Pharaoh wanted to kill him. Why? Because the enemy will use your brother against you. He will use your sister. He will use your mom, your dad. He will use your boss. He will use somebody that's close to you. He will even use a spouse against you to destroy the promise that God's got concern, concerning your life. Don't frame the face of the Pharaoh and place it in bitterness inside your heart. But speak over Pharaoh's life prosperity. Say, Father, I thank you that you love Pharaoh the same way you love me. And that you want to prosper him or her the same way you want to prosper me. And you get your clear answer from God what you need to do concerning your tomorrow. And your Abba Daddy will come through for you. And if he doesn't come through for you, then I'm a liar. And this entire Bible is a lie. Now let me close with this. R Matthew 6.14, he says, if you don't forgive your father, heaven cannot forgive you. As old covenant written in the New Testament. The New Testament forgiveness is as I have forgiven you, so you forgive now. How did he forgive us? He forgave us unconditionally. Now, you know what? It's so easy to sit and write things down that people have done against you and you, you lose track for a second of what you've done against God. You know, you don't have to forgive me if I don't sin against you. And I always tested friendship, not in the brides we have together i've always tested friendship in the in the willingness to walk with me while you disagree with me to in love endure me instead of crucifying me because it's it's easy to love someone when they do good to you but it's a little bit more difficult when they don't that's why jesus when he was preaching said what good do you do when you love those that love you, but you hate those that hate you? Love your enemy. And he said, if somebody wants to take something from you, turn, if somebody hit you, in the, turn the other cheek. Jesus had a lot of things that he said that I don't like. Um, but he did, he did say that. And he said that for a purpose. Why? Because at the end of the day, the treasure that is in your heart will come out of your mouth. And usually the picture frame of the person that you are angry at, if that's in your heart, that is the person you'll be talking about continuously on and on and on and on and on. Now behind me is pictures of my family. And, and uh, I wasn't going to sit here this morning. I was actually going to sit outside in the bush, but then two of our uh, church members pitched up for church this morning that, that didn't read the broadcast. So they downstairs with the shy. And I thought, let me just sit here because it's quiet. And you know why that picture of my family is framed and in my office is because it's my family. There isn't a family, a stranger's family there on that, on that, in that frame. There isn't. Why? Because they, they're in my heart. And unfortunately, the body of Jesus Christ, we walk around with frames of photos of pharaohs in our hearts. And it makes you a bitter person. It makes you a person that you don't want, that other people don't want to spend time with. Who wants to spend time with a person that's continuously just um, vomiting negativity? Who wants to do that? The only pictures that comes out of their heart is the Pharaoh that has come against them. And Afrikaans noem ek het a vervolgingswaanzin. I don't know what the English for that is. You maybe get translated for Volgens But you continuously believe people are persecuting you. When the rugby scrum goes down, you think they're gossiping of you inside, but they're just actually playing the rugby game. It's not a nice place to be to have your heart filled with bitterness. Now, I strongly believe that if you don't forgive people, you will not enjoy the peace of God in your life. I strongly believe that. Not because God is not willing to give you his peace, but simply because you continuously, instead of looking at God's promise, you're looking back at Pharaoh. And you know what? God has made it so clear. He put, he's put a pillar of fire between Pharaoh and Israel, making it impossible for them to reach them. Even though they were on the, behind them, if they looked at Pharaoh, behind them was an impossibility. We can't get, we can't, we can't get out of the situation. 
God will always, always protect you. God will always remind you that he has placed the fire of the Holy Ghost between you and your enemy. He can't get close to you. But if you allow him into your inner circle, if you make this fight personal, you will end up being bitter. So this morning, I'm, I hope I've blessed somebody and I hope somebody listened to me. And if you do listen to this later on, um, uh, please um, uh, share this message and maybe it'll help someone else. I have only... Let me sh you say to me, Donnie, let me just share this with you. I've once unfriended a person on Facebook. And, um, uh, sorry, it wasn't you. Because you can still listen to me. And um, this person that I've unfriended on Facebook, um, I unfriended that person for, for a reason. And you can say, Donnie, but you want to talk to me about forgiveness, but you unfriend somebody on Facebook. Let me tell you why I did that. Maybe if you've heard the story that you know why. This person continuously attacked people on my Facebook wall concerning things that I preach and they believe and he, and he attacked them. And, and it wasn't that he just attacked them. He, he, he became personal and he, and he got nasty. And, and he's a good friend of mine. And I said to him, listen, brother, please don't attack people on my Facebook wall. If you do that, I would have to unfriend you. And he continued doing that. And I warned him two or three times. And then I unfriended him. I don't have anything against this guy that I've unfriended him. I just protected the people that was listening and or reading my post and, and replying to that from his attack. Because for some weird reason, the enemy has managed to make us believe that if we attack the body of Jesus Christ, we are doing the work of the Lord. Wake up call. You're not. You're not doing the work of the Lord if you attack the body of Jesus Christ. Your opinion might differ from someone else's opinion, but then we need to agree to disagree. But we are obligated to love one another, stand together, and work through things that we disagree on. And then if we can't come to a conclusion, I will never unfriend you if you've, if you've harmed me. I will not do that. I will continue preaching the same gospel on my Facebook wall that I've preached ever since. The ministry of reconciliation. The ministry of reconciliation. If God was willing to forgive Donnie van Wyk, who gives Donnie van Wyk the right not to forgive someone else? I don't have that right. So in my heart this morning, I choose to remove the picture frames of those that I feel might have have uh, harmed me. I choose and I and I place those picture frames. I sat. I sat in our church building this morning, a lack of a building under the roof, looking at what we have done. And um, uh, I looked at the bush and I listened to the birds and I saw the the, the effect that the water had on on uh, the grass. And I sat this morning and I said. Father, I know you love A, B, and C. I know you love them. And I know if you had to choose sides between me and A, B, and C, you will not choose me above A, B, and C, or A, B, and C above me. You love us all equally. And that's why I pray for a resolve. I pray for a solution. I pray for a sea to open up. I pray for a sea to open up so that there will be a miracle that none of us miss out on our promise that God has made concerning us. I am this morning very grateful for the opportunity I had to share this word with you. And I want you to remember, if you, if you forget everything that I've said this morning, um, I want you just to remember one thing. God will never gang up with you against your enemy. He loves the human race. He died for them. So take your problems to the Lord. Ask God to give you a rod with which you can hit the problem and not attack Pharaoh with. A lot of times we take God's answer and we attack our friends and family in Christ instead of just putting it in the problem and God making a way through that problem for us. I prophesy over you and over myself 
by this time next year, you will definitely have seen God's hand in action over your life. If you choose to listen to his voice and not take your opinion and gang up against somebody. So uh, let's, just, let's just thank God in prayer. Father, Holy Spirit, Jesus, thank you that you are one God that chose to reveal yourself to us in three persons so that we can understand with our limited intellect, try to understand you as this incredible God. You are, you are so beautiful and so awesome and so great. And I walked on this piece of property this morning and I thought in my heart how grateful I am to be able to live in a setting like this. I am forever grateful for this opportunity. And the vision that you showed me last week, Lord, I know what that vision is all about. And I thank you this morning that I'm not praying about my own situation. I'm praying for those that have listened to me this morning that really needed to hear this word. I am praying that if they take that staff and attack Pharaoh, you, we are not called to take the promise of God and attack people with it. We are called to take the promise of God and force the problem out of the way. And Father, our battle is not against flesh and blood. There's stuff in the background that's trying to destroy unity and God's heart and God's plan for the body of Jesus Christ. This morning I'm grateful for forgiveness. I'm grateful that when Jesus died, my name was included on that list. It would have been horrible if my name wasn't on that list. But I'm grateful that my name was on that list and that all my iniquities was included in that one sacrifice. Dealt with, wiped off the slate, removed as far as the east is from the west, and that you've given me this gospel of peace. I'm grateful that there's only one desire in my heart, and that is to preach this gospel to people. Uh, I don't have any other desire in my heart. For 27 years last year, 28 years this year, that's the only desire I've got, is to preach your love to people. And, and I pray that I will not frame faces in a chamber in my heart that will cause me to be bitter, but that I will continuously love and love and love and love the way that you've loved me when I didn't qualify for your love. You didn't have to forgive me if I wasn't found guilty. And you couldn't declare me innocent if there wasn't evidence against me. So there was evidence against me, that's why I was guilty and that's why an innocent lamb was slaughtered so that I could enjoy the freedom of my, my relationship with you. So for the people that are listening to me this morning, that have got picture frames in their hearts of people that have harmed them and that they are holding against, maybe it's a spouse, maybe it's a child, maybe it's a dad or a loved one or somebody close to you that has really, really, really hurt you. I want you this morning to take that frame out of your heart. Take that picture frame out of your heart and I want you to start praying for that person and pray for the blessing of that person's life. And... Put that picture in another chamber in your heart that is part of your favorites. I give you praise, Holy Spirit, for your influence in our lives. I give you praise for this word that you gave me. The face that I saw on my phone preaching was my own face. I've got no idea who listened to me, but I just, just preached a pretty awesome sermon to Donnie van Bay. And you better listen, Donnie, to what God is saying to you. And I thank you, Lord, that you will make a way where there seem to be no way. For those that really need a miracle in their lives, that is my prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So how do we forgive? Forgiveness is, um, forgiveness is like antibiotics. Um, if, the, if you go to a doctor and he gives you antibiotics and it's 
It's designed to fight the bug in your body. The doctor will tell you, you need to finish the course. You need to drink all the antibiotics. And he gives you this prescription, maybe three times a day or whatever. And he says to you, you know why? Because if you don't drink it, all of it, then the, then the virus in your body will build up a, a resistance against the antibiotics. And that's how forgiveness works. Forgiveness in our lives, for God, was instant. But in our lives, it works like this. Every time you think of the person that has harmed you, you say this. You take a bit of antibiotics. You say this. I have forgiven this person, and I speak blessing over this person's life. And I ask Abba Daddy to open ways where there is no way in this person's life that he can really or she can really enjoy the prosperity of, of their relationship with God. You continuously say that until that bitterness, until the pain in your body is gone, then you can throw the empty bottle away. Forgiveness is powerful. I know why to share this message to me look, looking in my face. And um, if you've got any questions, well, you're more than welcome to share this message. Um, and um, I'm, I, I believe that uh, I would have to go and heat up my coffee in the microwave, but that's fine. I can do that. Have a fantastic day. And if you want to come and visit us here at, at Shiloh today, if you sit there at home and you say, man, I really miss the fellowship, come care for me to shy. That's fine. The road might be messed up because of the rain, but uh, the coffee is awesome and the fellowship's even better. This is Facebook Oak.